December 11th and again today we're going to talk about segways but today we're going to create custom segway transition animations which is pretty cool because we can define how the segway actually transitions from one view controller to another. So how is that going to work? Let's bring up Xcode and find out. So I'm pressing Command Shift N to create a new project. Let's choose a single view application. Let's call it custom segways hit next and create. And if you haven't seen the videos on view controller transitions and segways, then have a look at the playlist in the video description below. It's part of the advent calendar series. It's a tutorial from yesterday where we talked about segways in detail. And today we're going to focus on custom segways. So again, I'm bringing up a second view controller. Let's choose again some different colors here. Let's go with green and blue again. And I am going to add a button to my first view controller somewhere here in the top left corner and also a button to my second view controller to dismiss it. And then we're going to create a segue from this button in the first view controller to my second view controller by pressing control on the keyboard and then creating the segue to this view controller. And we're going to choose custom as the segue. And now we get these curly braces here as an icon for our segue. And what we can do here is to choose a custom class, which is responsible for the custom segue transition. And this is also what we're going to do now. We're creating a new class, pressing command and on the keyboard, selecting a Coco touch class, going to name it scale. Segway, since this is the kind of um, animation I'd like to perform, simple scale up and scale down. And we're going to inherit from UI Storyboard Segway. So we choose subclass of UI Storyboard Segway. Let's hit next and create that. And since we are inheriting now from UI Storyboard Segway, what we can do to customize our transition is simply overriding the perform function, where we can actually do all of the stuff that we'd like to do, but I prefer to add another function for that in case you'd like to add different kinds of animations and you have to choose different types. And we're simply going to uh, call that function scale without any parameters or a return type. And in this function, we're going to deal with our animation now. And we have to think about a segue in the ways also a segue does, since we always have a from view controller or a source view controller and a destination view controller we are transitioning to. And this is something we have to take into account. So what we do here now in our scale segue is first of all, create two constants, one for the two view controller which is going to be self.destination. And this is a property we get from UI storyboard segue and also from view controller, which we also get right from our UI storyboard segue class. And what we also need are two more constants. One, the container view that we're later going to use to add our two view controller to so that we have a nice transition. And therefore we're going to use the from view controller, its view and the super view. And this gives us a UI window. And then we also need the original center of our from view controllers view and we access the center. And this is the point from where we're zooming or scaling our second view controller. And now we can begin adjusting our two view controller a little bit. So we take the two view controller, its view, and we adjust the transform property using CG affine transform and initialize that with a scaling factor of 0 0.05. So we're scaling it down a lot. And then we're using the two view controller, set its view and its center to the original center of our from view controller. And then we can take our container view and add to it a sub view, which is going to be the two view controller and its view. And then we can directly start animating the whole thing. So we're taking UI view and we animate with duration, delay options and so on. So we're starting with the time interval of 0.5 seconds. We don't need a delay. We use 
curve is in out as our animation options and then we will add our animations closure right here so adding some uh, curly braces and then what we want to do is set our two view controller its view and the transform um, property to the transform identity with that we're zooming it back to its original size and once our animation is completed, we also have to present our destination view controller or the two view controller originating from our source view controller. So I'm adding here our completion closure with some curly braces. We have a success boolean here, the in keyword to divide the parameters from the actual code block. And then we simply use the from view controller, call the present function right here. And here we have to add a two view controller, which is our two view controller or our destination of the segue. We don't want this to be animated since we have already animated it. And here we do not need a completion closure. And all we need to do now is actually call the scale function in the perform function that is part of the UI storyboard segue class. And then we can go back to our storyboard and add this custom class right here in our storyboard segue in the attributes inspector. So I'm just typing in scale segue. I'm running this now in the simulator and then we should already have our forward animation and this should be our scale animation. So I'm pressing the button and here we have our scale animation. But our second button does not bring us back to our blue view controller. There are two possible ways to do that. We could simply dismiss this view controller with a simple action that we would add to a second view controller class, which we would have to create first, or we're using an unwinding segue. And the way to create such an unwinding segue is not just to add another segue back to our original view controller, it is to use the exit point of our application, which is right here. So I'm pressing control on the keyboard and try to drag that to this exit point. I could also do that to here in our view controller scene, but it does not seem to work. And the reason for that is that we need a special function or an IB action in our source view controller for that or where we want to dismiss to actually. So here I am defining in our view controller an IB action, which is a function, and I'm going to call that prepare for unwind. And what we need here is one parameter, which is a segue, so a UI storyboard segue and we didn't do not need to implement anything here in this function we just need this function so that we can work with it in interface builder and now that i have added this function i can again press control on my dismiss button maybe i'm also naming it dismiss so now i'm naming this present and then i'm con press control on my keyboard and now i can drag to this exit point or to this exit point and select the prepare for unwind with segue function. And if we now run this in the simulator again, we, we already have our back animation in a standard implementation. So I'm presenting and I'm dismissing. And this is the standard animation we get when we use a segue, but we can also customize that. Therefore, we are going back into our scale segue class and we can even implement another class in the same file. So this is where we store all of them. So we have an unwind scale segue right here, which is again, a UI storyboard segue. And then we can actually just copy and paste the whole code we have already created for our scale segue, paste it right here in our unwind scale segue, and just make a few adjustments so we can get rid of all of that stuff right here. We just need our two view controller and the from view controller. And then what we can do is actually add our two view controller to the from view controller, which is now the other way around because we're going back to our um, green, uh, to our blue view controller. So I have to think that through in the other way around. So we're going back to our scale segue class. And here what we want to do now is using the from view controller, its view and its super view again, and we insert a sub view, which is the two view controllers. So the blue view controllers view in our case. And we're adding that 
at index zero. And then we have also to make some adjustments to the animation. So we're using the from view controller this time, and we're not adding the transform identity, but here again, we scale it down because we want to downscale animation. We use the same values as we used earlier when we set the initial frame or the initial transform value for our view controller. And here we're using this one. And now we also have to change our completion handler here. So we are removing that line of code we call from view controller and the dismiss function. And here we again set animation to false. And also we do not need a completion handler. But before we can make this work, what we have to do is go back to our main storyboard and choose our unwind segue here in the view controller scene and also supply a custom class for that, which is our unwind scale segue. But unfortunately, that's not exactly enough for this to really work and we automatically get our animation, we again have to go back in our from view controller in this case, and we have to perform or we have to add the unwind for unwind segue function. So we are overriding this. And here we have to create a segue object that is an object of our segue class and then manually perform or trigger the perform function. So I'm creating a segue object right here and initialize it with an unwind scale segue. And we use the initializer with the identifier source and destination. And we get this from the unwind segue argument here in this function. So we use unwind segue identifier, unwind segue and source and unwind segue and the destination. And then the last thing we need to do is use that segue and call the perform function. And with that, we're really done and we can run this in the simulator. And now we have a nice segue, hopefully, in the one direction when we present and also in the other direction when we dismiss our second view controller. So this is now a whole package of interesting things you can do with view controllers. Today you have seen how to add custom animations to your segues. You can be creative with that. Yesterday you have seen how to use segues in general and before that you have seen how to deal with different view controllers and how to manage transitioning between them. I hope this tool set helps you with your own applications. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.